Hey everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guide on Avoid Dance Quests. Now, for this quest, you need the following requirements. So, you must have completed these quests Wolf Whistle, Druidic Ritual, and the uh, prequel quest Quiet Before the Swarm. As for skill requirements, you will need um, the following, and none of these can be boosted. 46 Hunter, 47 Construction and Mining, 48 Summoning, 49 Herb Law, 52 Wood Cutting, and 54 Thieving. So that's it for requirements, now onto the items. You'll need the Com Orb, which will be obtained during the quest, a Spade or Meerkat pouches. Um, a Spade is obtainable during the quest, so you can find that on your travels. Um, an Onion, which once again can be obtained during the quest. Uh, some coins and 16 free inventory spaces are needed for a section of the quest. And you're going to need weapon, armour and food in order to defeat two Black Knight Guardians. So that's it for the requirements and items, now on to quest starting point. So, we're currently on the Void Knight's Outpost, which you can access by your Void Knight seal that you got as a reward from the previous quest. And when you're there, you want to go and speak to the Commodore. After finishing an argument with Captain Coruscai, he'll tell you that the Void Knights and Temple Knights have made no progress towards capturing the escaped pest. Um, he'll propose to send you, Captain Coruscai and Jessica, to track down the escaped pest, and you want to talk to Captain Coruscai, who asks you to meet her at the Port Serim dock. So make your way to Port Serim via the Port Serim Lodestone and speak with Captain Coruscai. With no leads on the pest whereabouts, she'll ask you to speak with the locals and find out if anyone has found anything or seen anything out of the ordinary. You want to speak to Captain Tobias nearby, uh, who will mention that he hasn't noticed anything strange, but the fishmonger Geraint claims that something has been damaging his fish barrels. So head over to Geraint's fishy business, just north of the lodestone, and speak with him, and he'll reiterate what Tobias said, although adding that the creature headed out west a couple of days back. Exit the shop and a purple track will appear, leading from the dock and continuing onwards towards the barrels. So you want to follow the track, searching bushes, plants and stones, which will make the trail go further. So this is very similar to the normal like hunting uh, ability, and you would have uh, done this in other various quests as well. Eventually the track will end uh, where you find a mound against the north side of the Rusty Anchor pub. Once you've found the mound, check it and then go inform Captain Coruscant of your findings and she'll tell you to go talk to the bartender of the Rusty Anchor pub to gain access to his cellar. If you ask Captain Coruscant about the Void Knight's belief, she'll hand you a Void Knight book. So when you go find the bartender, he's unfortunately too sick and has lost the cellar key somewhere in the pub and he'll mention looking in one of the junk piles on the floor. Search them until you find the key and proceed to the cellar via the trapdoor in the northwest corner of the pub. In the cellar you're joined by Jessica and Captain Coruscai who ask you both to look around for anything out of the ordinary. You want to inspect a suspicious looking wall on the north side and mine it out and a strange purple goo similar to the one in the trail uh, begins to pour out and Jessica tells you she'd like to gather up some for further inspection although need a container. The nearby storeroom houses an empty barrel which you can use but you must find a way to obtain it through the beer hatch. Once the barrels are in position, you can kick the empty barrel along the path, which I will talk you through now. So starting from here, if you pay attention to what's being displayed on the video, you want to do the following. So kick the barrel south of you twice, walk one east and kick the barrel south of you, walk one south and kick the barrel west of you, walk one west and kick the barrel south of you, walk one southwest and kick the barrel west of you. Walk one northwest and kick the barrel east of you twice. Walk one northwest and kick the barrel north of you. Walk one north and kick the barrel west of you twice. Walk one west and kick the barrel south of you three times. Walk one west and kick the barrel south of you. Hang around to the other side by going three east and one south and kick the barrel west of you twice. Kick the southwesternmost barrel south. Kick the southernmost centre barrel to the east twice. Walk one east and two north. Kick the barrel north twice and walk one northwest and kick it east. 
walk to the east side of the southern middle barrel and kick it west and then kick it south from the north side and then that should enable you a nice clear route in order to kick the empty barrel out through the hatch. If you found my audio instructions too confusing there, yeah, just go by the video uh, it being displayed and that will uh, show you the correct route to go. So after Jessica has completed the samples needed, Captain Coruscant instructs you to talk to the bartender and explain their business. You can choose to be honest or lie, but the result will still be the same. Talk to Captain Coruscant at the docks who says that the pest would probably have stowed away again to Musa Point in search of a warmer habitat. So we now want to head to Karamja and we want to speak to Zamba who's in the pub near the Karamja volcano. Speak to him about noticing anything odd and he mentions that Kofi, the manager of the general store, recently became ill after he saw a scorpion or something. Go speak to Kofi and he will promise to help you if you can repair his wall. In the southwest corner of the store, uh, with the take from option, the supply table, you'll get some logs, a plank and a chisel and hammer. Use the planks and logs on the chisel to get a jointed plank and jointed log and use the constructed items together to get a joist, which you must place on the north wall to repair it. Talk to Kofi again and he'll point you to the pest trail, similar to the one you had in Port Sarim. So what you need to do is search the logs, shrubs and succulents to follow the trail in the same way as you did earlier. And again, at the end of the track, you'll come across another hidden burrow in the banana plantation. You'll be joined by the women who suggest you search the hole for more clues, investigate the mound to get some wood shards, which Jessica identifies as waxwood, and she'll tell you to meet up with Romanik at his crafting store in Remington while they go see the chemist about the goo. Now before travelling to Remington, you need to make sure you've got 16 free inventory spaces and the waxwood shards in your inventory. So head over to Remington, the quickest way is to go to the Port Serene Lodestone and then head from there and you want to speak with Romnick about the waxwood. Apparently he recently delivered a large order of boxes made of the waterproof waxwood to an unknown buyer in Falador. After learning about the waxwood, go into the chemist's house to the west and speak with Captain Coruscant and then with the chemist and he'll require you to help him analyse the purple goo with different parts in his laboratory. Now on the top right of the screen, there will be an interface with a chart of five recipes, each combining two of substances to obtain a third, and they're all in the form of A plus B equals C. The ways in which they can be combined will vary from player to player. On the top left of the screen is a chart showing the current state of the machine in three specifications, heat, power and stability. And it will also show a current ingredient and desired result. After short intervals of time, both of these factors will change and you'll need to refer to the recipes to see what ingredient must be added to the current one in order to obtain the desired result. To perform the analysis, you must add the required ingredient from the inventory into the hopper. Whilst doing this, the machine may become unbalanced with heat and pressure as indicated by the top left table. Now in order to control the different things you can do the following, so take from the component box as you run out of samples and then use the correct secondary sample on the hopper to increase the uh, power of the flywheel if the power is low and stoke the furnace if the heat is low. You can apply the brake to the flywheel brake if the power is high and you can open the furnace vent if the heat is high. 
So this bit can be tricky and might take you a couple of attempts and basically you just need to keep the machine operating while um, turning your sample into the different things and obviously you can refer to how to make the sample um, by going by the reactions on the right hand side so um, it will tell you what the current sample is and what you need to turn the sample to and you need to literally just add the next ingredient in order to get that and obviously whilst doing this keep an eye on the heat power and stability of the machine and by using the relevant um, options around you by either increasing the power or decreasing the power or increasing the heat or decreasing the heat you'll be able to make sure the machine doesn't break again if you're not too sure just pay attention to what I'm doing in the video and you'll soon get the drift of what you need to do So once the machine eventually reaches 100%, uh, speak to the chemist and it will reveal that the goo drains life energy from its surroundings to feed itself. Honest news, Jessica will offer to teleport you back to Satifi Kashin to discuss the matters. Speak with Satifi and he'll tell you that there is a stall owner who has opened up for business south of the Eastern Bank and is selling mysterious puzzle boxes. Head over to his shop and buy one box off him and return to Satifi. After you try to open the box, Satifi, Captain Coruscant and Jessica each take a go but fail. Jessica then suggests some complex ways to open. It doesn't matter what you choose, so go ahead with any of them and Captain Coruscant will then crack it open with her sword pommel to find more of the goo. Return to the stall owner and attempt to find out where he got the boxes, but he refuses. You then want to return to Satifi and he'll tell you to speak with Ceramic Vars, the leader of the White Knights, who can be found on the second floor of the West Tower in the White Knights Castle to give you a warrant to search his stall. So head in that direction now and speak with Ceramic to get the warrant. So once you have the warrant, go and question Ali the stall owner until he gives you a mysterious clue scroll, saying that the clue is what led him to mysterious boxes in the cave. Return to Satifi to begin the treasure trail and with Captain Coruscant and Jessica keeping contact via the com orb. Now if you do not already have a sextant chart and watch, Sir Tiffy will direct you to the observatory professor who will give you instructions for retrieving them. Now guys if you already have the uh, chart, watch and sextant uh, with you on your tool belt then you won't need to uh, watch this uh, next couple of minutes of the guide, I'm just going to basically talk people through how to find those items if they don't have them already. So if you need the sextant watch and chart, you need to do the following things in order to find them. So you need to go and find the observatory professor, who can be found at either the observatory reception building, uh, which is north of Castle Wars, or in the actual observatory itself if you completed the quest. So quickest way to get to uh, the observatory reception building is via the Yanil Lodestone, via the Lodestone network. Now if you find he's not in the reception building, it means he's in the actual observatory itself, so you'll need to go through the dungeon in order to reach it, which is just a short walk around here near where these goblins are cooking, and then you basically need to navigate to the right point of the dungeon, which is pretty much uh, in the sort of very southern part of it, so you'll need to navigate through these tunnels as I'll show you on the video. Go through the dialogue with the um, professor and he will say to you that he'll give you the chart once you obtain the uh, clock and the sextant um, and he will tell you how to find them. So we need to go and get them and then have to come back here again in order to get the chart. So to get the uh, clock you can see um, Brother Kojo in the clock tower which is south of Ardone. Now the quickest way to get there if you have the Ardone cloak you can teleport to the monastery. If not go to the Ardone lodestone and then walk to the clock tower from there speak with brother Kojo and he'll give you the uh, watch and then to get the sextant you need to go and see Murphy who can be found wandering around on Port Cazard so um, either walk there from where the clock tower is or you can use a charter ship to get to Port Cazard and get the sextant from him.
once you have the sextant and the watch, you want to return to the Professor uh, either in the reception building or in the observatory, depending on where he was for you, and he will then teach you how to use them and give you the chart. Once you obtain these items, you can add them to your tool belt. So once you've um, made sure you've got everything and spoken to Sir Tiffy, he'll give you the clue. Now the first clue is a map, the location of which is south of the wheat field, west of Falador, south of Taverley, and north of Tora to Hag's house. Now if you don't have a spade, you can find one in the estate agent's house south of the park. So if you just watch where I'm going on the video, I will show you where to dig in order to get the uh, scroll. So you'll now receive another clue. The clue you will read will say, South of a city and east of a guild, there wanders a fellow whose path went astray. Hand him an onion and give him a wave. So what you need to do is go east of the crafting guild, which is just near where Port Sarim is actually. So if you teleport to the Port Sarim lodestone and then head in that direction from there. When you're near the crafting guild, you'll find a man wandering around with a walking stick. You need to give him an onion, which you can pick by the uh, nearby onion field. And then when you've done that, select the wave option from your emotes and you'll receive another clue. You'll then be given a third clue, which reads, check a crate in the farmhouse west of the Falador farming patch. So you want to enter the farmhouse, which is south of Falador. Now, if you have the Explorer's Ring uh, free, you can use the Cabbage Port to go to the farm. If not, just teleport back to the Port Serim Load Zone and walk north from there. Enter the farmhouse and search the crate just behind the lobby entrance to receive another clue. The new clue reads, splash of red in the holy bed lies north of its fountain. So what you need to do is go to the Edgefield Monastery. The quickest way to do that is to go to the Edgefield Lodestone. The flower we're looking for is in the northeast corner of the central fountain area. And after digging on the correct red flower, you'll receive a coordinate clue. So this is the time to prepare all your potions, food and armor uh, as you'll be fighting against the Black Knight Guardians. Now there is a safe spot and Knight is very weak to magic so that's strongly recommended. So the coordinate clue will read 11 degrees 9 minutes north, 17 degrees 56 minutes each which is a hatch entrance south of the Black Knight's fortress so just a short walk from where we are now. So try to enter the hatchway and you'll speak with Captain Coruscant and Jessica via the com orb and they'll teleport to help you out. The three of you enter the hatchway and appear in a room full of boxes. Captain Coruscant will knock out the knight on guard and kill him. Speak with Captain Coruscant and she'll try to enter the next room, but the Black Knight doorkeeper will stop her. So to get a hold of the passcode, Jessica will summon a void drone, which you have to plant on a low box near the door. So we need to sneak your way over to the low box near the door, avoiding contact with the workers walking in and out, and then plant the bug and wait for a worker to go through the door. Pick the void drone back up and speak with Jessica who will tell you the password. Jessica will approach the door and tell the guard the password, but without an identification in Cygnus, just not allowed in. So what we need to do now is pickpocket a worker as he is leaving and you'll receive an insignia. Knock on the door and speak with the guard. You'll say the password and he'll ask for insignia. After trying to trick you with a secret handshake, you'll enter with Captain Coruscant and Jessica. You can kill or bind and gag the guard, and then speak with Captain Coruscant. You then want to enter the next room and click the murder option on the indentured servant to receive a workshop key. So we're now about to enter the final room where we have to defeat a Black Knight Guardian. Now this Black Knight Guardian heals from your prayer, so it's best to drain your prayer points to zero before entering the final room. So use the key on the door to be faced by the level 77 Knight Guardian, who's weak to magic, and there'll be another level 110 Guardian there as well, who's weak to melee. Captain Coruscant will attack the one on the east, leaving the Western Knight for you. 
Now, as I said at the beginning, it's recommended to use magic against the Black Knight Guardian as he's incredibly weak to water spells. Now, as mentioned, if the player has any prayer points while fighting the knight, he'll shout in on guard and your energy will fuel my life and he will then drain the player's player points and heal himself. When you finish killing the guardian, speak with the void leech which tells you a little about itself. The void pest was caught by the Kinshra to harvest the goo which they plan to wreak havoc over Falador using Ali Tist's boxes. You're given the option to set it free or kill it. Either way, Captain Coruscant will teleport you and Jessica back to the Void Knight's outpost and you want to speak with the Commodore to finish the quest. So after the cutscene it will come up congratulations, you've completed a void dance, you're awarded one quest point, a void knight commendation which can be given to a void knight for 50 void knight commendation points, 10,000 hunter and herbal experience, 8,000 summoning and woodcutting experience, 5,000 thieving and construction experience and mining experience, 2 treasure and keys and 2 hearts of ice. So there we are, quest complete. So overall, not really a difficult quest, just a lengthy one, a few little things to do here and there, but overall the activities aren't that difficult. It might take you some time to track down the trail of the uh, pest, um, but that's just a process of just trial and error until you've uh, completed that. Uh, the end boss shouldn't be too difficult for you as long as you've like drained your prayer before the fight and if you've used magic it will be pretty easy for you. Most of you will be completing this uh, quest in order to do the finale quest. Uh, which is the void stairs back and once I have uh, completed that quest guide it will be available in the description below. But yeah, I don't think you'll run into any problems following my guide, however if you do get stuck leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you out as best as I can. If not, thank you for watching, please make sure you like, favourite, comment, subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends. Cheers everyone, bye bye.